wiretapped someone suspected of spying with or for a foreign government is issued by the United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, or FISA Court. That is actually a tribunal whose actions are carried out in secret, but whose actions do not apply against American citizens fully complying with the Foreign Agents Registration Act, or FARA, that was enacted in 1938 and is a disclosure statute that requires persons acting as agents of foreign principles in a political or quasi-political capacity to make periodic public disclosure of their relationship with the foreign principle, as well as activities, receipts, and disbursements in support of those activities. Upon taking office in January of 2017, President Trump discovered that many powerful Democratic Party lawmakers in the U.S. Congress were not complying with the FARA statute to describe their foreign connections and affiliations, thus necessitating his needing to obtain FISA warrants against them to discover what they were doing and among those who were their targets. Democratic Party U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, whose secret dealings with a Chinese spy in her employ for nearly 20 years has yet to be fully explained. Democratic Party U.S. Senator Dick Durbin, whose wife, Loretta Durbin, was discovered to be a lobbyist for clients who received favors from her husband, one of whom was the Mexican government's National Museum of Mexican Art, who funneled millions of dollars to Senator Durbin and his wife for reasons still not known. And yes, it's documented. The Democratic Party U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who received a mysterious gift of nearly half a million dollars from her father-in-law, Sidney Gillibrand, who is a British citizen and former chairman of the U.K. defense giant Amec Foster Wheeler, or AMEC, with it further left being unexplained about Senator Gillibrand as to why the Mexican government protected her father, Doug Rutnick, who has ties to the leader of a sex cult, President Trump forced the Mexicans to deport back to the United States. As astonishing as all that may seem, but it is nevertheless true, this report notes that U.S. Senator Feinstein Durbin and Gillibrand are three of the most powerful Democratic Party lawmakers deciding the fate of U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and whose fellow radical leftist Democrat U.S. Senate judiciary members joining them in publicly executing Kavanaugh include Democratic Party U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal, who last week asked Judge Kavanaugh whether he knew the legal term phallus in uno or phallus in omnibus, false on one thing, false on all, but in the past lied for 15 years, falsely claiming that he served in Vietnam and was a hero, despite the fact that he sought multiple deferments and then signed up for the Marine Reserve to avoid going to the Vietnam War. And there's Democratic Party U.S. Senator Cory Booker, who in 1992 wrote an article for his college newspaper, wherein he bragged about groping and molesting a drunken 15-year-old girl or child. Democratic Party U.S. Senator Kamala Harris, who as the Attorney General of California in the aftermath of the 2007-2008 financial crisis, set up a task force to investigate banks for their crimes, then quietly closed out her investigation without prosecuting anyone and probably spending a heck of a lot of money doing it. They want to use a procedural maneuver to force a vote on a build, bill to shield the special counsel from potential interference. This move has failed once before, and it may fail again. As Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says, he'll block it. But Senator Chris Coons believes he has an advantage. 
What I think uh, the Republican majority leader ought to do uh, is simply allow us to have a vote and move forward. Senator Flake, I'll remind you, has steadfastly refused to vote for any uh, presidential nominee for a, a judicial post, uh, either in the Judiciary Committee or on the floor, until we get this vote. Uh, that gives us some leverage. Senate Majority Leader McConnell says the bill is simply unnecessary. The president's not going to uh, fire Robert Mueller nor do I think he should, nor do I think he should not be allowed to finish. Will you repeat what you did and object if they ask unanimous consent to bring that bill to the floor tomorrow like they did? I probably would, yeah. All of this developing as President Trump ramps up his criticism of the Russia probe. The president tweeting just this morning, while the disgusting fake news is doing everything within their power not to report it that way, at least three major players are intimating that the angry Mueller gang of Dems is viciously telling witnesses to lie about facts and they will get relief. This is our Joseph McCarthy era. Woo! Sean, what do you think about that tweet? Well, where to begin? Uh, I mean, I, look, I think the first thing with respect to what Senator McConnell is talking about, this is a solution in search of a problem. There is no... So then Credible, let it roll I mean, by. There's no, nothing that's saying that Mueller's going to get fired. In fact, DOJ came out yesterday with respect to its budget and said even if the government were to shut down, the budget for the special co counsel is protected. So we are continuing. I mean, this is political theater at its best. They are talking about a problem that doesn't exist. No one's talking about firing Mueller. Everybody's talking about cooperating with him. The White House has turned over countless documents and witnesses. The president's cooperated and, and yeah, responded to So why to not let them get it out of their system? Just let them do it. Who cares? Do it. Move on. In some ways, I, in, in some ways if, if that's what gets these justices through, uh, which I believe is the heart of the Trump legacy right now, what he has done to the judiciary, not just to the Supreme Court, but the appellate and circuit court levels, I don't know. I just I think the devil's in the detail. You've got to be careful because once you go down a road where you start protecting certain people, what happens if Mueller does go rogue? What happens if he doesn't wrap it up? Um, I do think that we shouldn't be protecting people uh, unless there's a particular threat to them. And right now, it's just Democrats making one up. Harris? Well, you know, I'm just wondering, Sean, if everybody in the room tends to agree except for Flake and Booker and Coons and the rest of the de Democrats, why not let it go through? Is there any, I mean, the... No, I, and, and in some ways, I do think, the devil's in the detail. I don't know what the actual legislation says, but if, if M Robert Mueller should be protected, then who else should be protected? I mean, my point is, is that Robert Mueller has a job to do. So it's got to be no, narrow but, in scope, But, but, but the, the bigger question is, who's threatening him? So far, the president hasn't yeah, said he's going to fire him. Well, who thinks this is going to pass, I guess is my question. Well, I, I think it, it got through the Senate Judiciary Committee. I, I don't disagree with you, though. I think at some point, just say, fine, if that's what gets you to move yeah. on justices with the limited amount of time we have left See, in this conference and do it. I disagree. Um, why, but, why, Lisa? I disagree because I think the special counsel already has too much authority and the scope is already too wide. So why give him further protection? Also, there's nothing to protect President Trump literally just submitted the questions that Mueller sent him in his well, that's team. Right, but that's Rudy Giuliani has said 1.4 million pages of material, more than 30 witnesses that they provided to Mueller and his team. So what is there to protect? Well, he has been an active participant that's in saying. the investigation. This whole thing is ridiculous. And regarding the judges, Republicans just secured a 53 uh, majority in the Senate next Congress. You can get whoever you want that's what through next too. Congress. So whatever, like don't appease well, and that's, people. That's my like point, play. though, is that okay. why are, but, but at some point you have a limited amount of time left in this Congress. And the question is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Are we going to get more Ooh. out of allowing this to happen? I might have to but, borrow that. But, yeah, but, 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 I, I mean, I <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah. Why are we, we're doing something, we're creating a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. You're right. The president just turned over questions to what he had. Every witness that they've asked for, apparently, so far, at least you haven't okay. seen any complaints, has turned over, and countless documents have been handed over. Okay, so you see there, Senator Coons on the floor talking about this very issue and arguing for this protection, for the special counsel. Leslie, what is the case for the protection? With You've heard everyone around you saying the president hasn't threatened to fire him anyway. No, well, his tweets are pretty threatening all the time about what he, you know, the, the amount of respect that he gives the special counsel. And in addition to that, you said there isn't a problem. The problem with the problem is once there is a problem, it's already done. A termination has already been issued. So this is something that has... I agree with you, Harris. Do they even have the votes? So let it go to a vote. You have to I remember... I think they do have the votes. Senator, oh, Flake, Senator, Senator Flake has said, look, 
look, I'm, I'm going to stop your nominees. He's not only on the committee, but the GOP is a very slim majority margin, 11 to 10. So I think this is something, and especially with the second in the, in the Senate, John Corney in the second GOP, ranking GOP in the Senate, says, hey, maybe we should put this to a vote. I think that the uh, leader, Senate Majority Leader so McConnell, should listen to that, put it to a vote if they have the votes, and I'm not sure they do, quite frankly. Uh, then but, but to, then uh, Mueller is protected I, I think, from, from any further, if you will, obstruction by the president or any the AG's office. Yeah, I, I any, 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 any further obstruction, obstruction by the president or the AG's office, just to finish the job, to finish the investigation completely. The president, one, one has not gonna, said he the president that this sets, though, is very dangerous. Just, you have the stop. Congress He's telling the executive away. branch that one of their employees can't be fired. I mean, that, that's, that's like you know, the president saying, I'm going to protect certain members of Congress from right. losing their re-election. The president, right. by the Constitution, has the right to appoint the people well, that serve they, in the executive branch. My... And the Department of Justice, the Attorney General in this particular case, or the Deputy Attorney General, because of the mm -hmm. recusal that started with Sessions, appointed this gentleman. They don't, the Congress can't come in and say, we want to pick and choose who gets protected. So here's my point, and I want to ask you, Lisa, about sure. this. Is, is it stronger to have your majority leader burn some of his powder now and block this, or do you let this go through, let Republicans, who it looks like they would have the votes anyway, and you know they can caucus in that little ante room and find out, right, because right? we saw that live on TV. So they go in there and they count each other's hands in the air, and then you go do this thing. And isn't it stronger to say, no, we blocked it as a body? rather than having someone step up and try to even thwart the vote, and you know you're going to lose flake on your judges, which you can recoup in, in January. But isn't the, I guess, the, the bigger boss move is to put the vote through and, and to, to let it no, happen? I, ding, I ding, think, ding. Hold, hold on, though. No, I, what, what's the point? This is so stupid. I don't think there's a point in going through. Because then you shut it down. But I don't even think there's a point in going through the motion. Nobody gets to martyr themselves that based on, on, oh, I didn't get to vote well, and I didn't get but to can do I, this. I, I want to ask a question to you, Leslie. If, if President Trump was going to shut down this Mueller investigation, why would he submit the questions? Why would he submit all of these witnesses or uh, provide all these witnesses to Mueller's team? Why would he submit 1.5 million pages of documents? Why? Well, first of all, you were asking me something I don't think you I'm can even answer, question. which is the mind of our president. I do know On the, the one hand, he the says there's is no he's not shutting it down. Yeah, he says he's going to sit down with Mueller. Can, can he says I he's not going to sit down with Mueller. Before we run out of time, though, at the irony of Jeff Blake saying he's going to block these judges when he's supposed to be a conservative, when he's been so unreliable, when he's exactly. going to go against what the party really wants, right. all for this, you know, this this move that is just grandstanding. But, just, yeah, but he's, everyone asks so this, this will be enough. Trust me. You push this through, then it becomes the next demand. I mean, this is not the end of the True. game. This is one step in a political Good drama. Point. This Blake, is a compelling argument for each side. And on both sides, I don't see necessarily the Democrats winning.